I recently moved to the Mac OS after using Windows computers my entire life. And since I got the MacBook Pro, I've been collecting all the tips and tricks that I've learned so I can share it with you. And by the way, these are not just for new Mac users. Also, existing Mac users can benefit from this. If you wanted to, right click on the trackpad, you can tap with two fingers. That's the Mac default way. You can change that in the settings or the system preferences to an actual right click. Go to the secondary click. You can click with two fingers or or click in the bottom right corner or if you're a lefty you want to click in the left corner you can also do that i got used to the tap with two fingers thing just because the trackpad is on the bigger size so tapping with two fingers in any place on the trackpad is much easier than going all the way to the right corner and clicking a right click and by the way while we're here for those who are used to tapping on the trackpad for a click instead of actually clicking you can get that over here you can check the tap to click feature. I prefer the actual click so I don't get any accidental taps. Plus it feels way more satisfying with the clicky sound. And by the way, if you lost your mouse, just move the mouse very fast. The cursor will get bigger and you'll find it much easier. One of the plus points over Windows. Now, if you've just opened up your Mac and you're wondering where's the start button, but here we don't have such thing. We have the Apple logo button. <laughs> you can sleep, restart, shut down the laptop or even lock the screen. And if you wanna know more about the Mac, like the storage for example there are also other ways to lock the screen as you can see here we have the control command q you can lock the screen or if you have a touch id on your mac you can just click the touch id button and it locks or you can just lock it from here i love clicking the touch id button i think it's the easiest option but if you don't have it you can just control command q and it's gonna lock the screen. Unlike Windows, you don't have the computer folder laying around on the desktop. Instead, if you wanna go to the computers folder or a user folder, you press on go and then select the file you want. Or you can have all these shortcuts. For example, computer, shift, command, C, it opens up the computer. The finder app on Mac is like the file explorer on Windows. You navigate your file through it. But the default settings straight out of the box of the finder app don't get you the most out of it. They're pretty basic and you might get lost coming from Windows. Like every other app on Mac, you have your settings all the way here. I mean, you can do some settings over here. Some people might like the icons or the list or the columns. The columns and the gallery are pretty preferable for Mac users. And you have the icons and the list are preferable for Windows users. I like the icons the most because that's how I used to do it on Windows. But for example, if you want to navigate through photos, for example, my travel to Istanbul, this is one of the best ways to navigate through photos because believe it or not you can't open up a photo and then navigate through all the photos in the same folder you have to open up each one of them one by one but with this way you can navigate through the photos just like Lightroom for example you have your details here you have all the other photos here if you don't have these settings over here you go to view and then hide or show toolbar by that you have a quicker access for such tools and speaking of hiding and showing you can also hide and show the tab bar what is the tab bar you might ask holy freaking moly when i discovered this feature i never went back by default the tab bar is hidden but you can get it as you saw from view and then show tab bar these are just like browser tabs but for the finders app so you don't have to open up a couple of windows next to each other you can just open few tabs camera folder final projects and i want to move things between them i don't want to have few windows floating around and then get lost if i wanted to get a new tab i just command t and here we go I have a new tab opened up. One of the best features over the File Explorer app on Windows. If you want to know the details of a file, you need to right click and get the info. But if you want to know the size of multiple files, you do the same thing. You select all the files, you get the info, and it shows you each of them separately. How to get both of them in the same one. You hit Control Command I and boom, you have two items, seven gigabytes, for example. If I select more than that, control command I, here we go, I have eight items, 30 gigabytes, so on and so forth. Or there is another way that I don't really like, but it's there, you can show the preview. You select a file, you get the info over here. If you select multiple files, you get the info of 
all these files over here, the size, the number of the items selected. It is annoying to have a blank window over here. It takes up a lot of space. I would have really appreciated this info to be at the bottom rather than this big. I like to keep the preview hidden just because it looks more clean. Let's talk about the toolbar. You can hide or show the toolbar and it's pretty customizable. You can drag and drop any folder and you can reach it at all times. You can also remove from the sidebar and I find it much easier to have the sidebar available at all times. For example, if I want to here drop any file, just drag and drop it and boom. If you want to move a file or a folder from a place to another, for example, if I want to move this, I just tap and hold, navigate to the folder that I wanted to move it to and then drop it over there. Apple loves to drag and drop almost everything. Let me show you some of the things that you can benefit from the drag and drop feature. For example, if you want to delete an app, drag the app to the trash while the launch pad is open and you can delete the app. To change the apps in the dock at the bottom, you can right click an app, go to options, remove from dock, or you can just drag it and drop it out. Dragging it to the trash won't delete the app. It just removes it from the dock. If you want to add the app again or add any other app, go to the launch pad, just drag and drop into the dock. You can also change the position. You can also here take it away. You can also customize the dock in other ways. You can go to system preferences, dock, and menu bar. And here you have a lot of other options. The size, the magnification, the position. You can change the way the windows minimize between this, the genie way, or the scale effect like this. I like to keep the genie effect, which is the default one. It looks way more satisfying. You can show recent applications in the dock. For example, if you open up one of the apps and then close it, it's gonna stay here as the recent apps that you open, but I keep this unchecked, it's more clean. You can automatically hide and show the dock. If you want a more clean look of your desktop, you can just reach the dock at the very bottom and it's gonna appear. I like to keep it there just because I have a visual representation of where to go right away. Instead of hovering all the way to the bottom, and then choose the app. You can also automatically hide and show the menu bar on the desktop. So you can hide both of them and have a very, very clean look. I like to keep both of them visible. If you type more than one language on your laptop and you change the language on your keyboard all the time, well, it's not the same as Windows. It took me some time to get used to it, but you have a couple of ways to change the language on your Mac. First of which is by clicking the bottom left key on your keyboard. So just tapping that key, you can change between the languages. Very easy, one click, boom. The other way, which is the one that I use, is by control space. It's not as easy and it's two clicks, but this thing that shows on the screen, it doesn't show when I tap control space. You can of course go to the top here and change it. You can add more languages, of course. You can also tap control command space to show the emojis. I got used to the control command space to have emoji that I want to add. Or if you forgot the shortcut, you can just go over here and show emoji and symbols. You can have a virtual keyboard. You can see the visual representation of the keyboard. And by the way, while we're talking about shortcuts, let me tell you how you copy and paste on Mac. Just like the Windows way, but instead of Control C, Control V, it's Command C, Command V. If you want to cut, Command X, Command A is select all. So Command is your new control, kind of. And by the way, you can change the function of this function slash Earth key by going to System Preferences Keyboard to change input source, you can change the language. For example, if you don't type with two languages, you can show the emojis and symbols. You can start dictation by pressing that key twice, or you can do nothing and just keep it as a function key. One of the things that I got used to on Windows computers is when I reach the bottom right corner and I click, it clears everything from the way and goes to the desktop. Here, it's a bit different, but also good. When you reach the bottom right corner, you see this thing pop up. It's a quick way to take a note. I find it very useful. I write a lot of notes. This feature is called Hot Corners and you can customize it to whatever you want and believe it or not, you can also use all the other corners to do different things. You go to System Preferences, Desktop and Screensaver, put on Screensaver over here and you can find here it's Hot Corners. Click on it and you can see you have four corners 
corners. We can see that the bottom right corner is a quick note. We can do a lot of other things as well. You can put it to go to the desktop, just like Windows. And here's how it works. You reach the corner, you wanna open up something, you close it, you finish, you can tap on one of the sides or you can just go back to the same corner. Not quite as Windows way, but it's pretty useful. I like to keep the bottom right corner as a quick note, just the default way. And we can do all kinds of other stuff in the other sides. Let's do the launch pad on the bottom left corner. You just slide the mouse to the corner and boom, you get the point of it. Next up, you can open up multiple desktops. So for example, if you use the same laptop for work and home, you can do a desktop for home and a desktop for work and you can just swipe between them let's say for example we have multiple windows open at work you want to go just home and you swipe to the other desktop and everything is clear and when you go back to work the next day you just swipe and you go back right where you left off to reach that you just swipe up with three fingers on the trackpad and you get this and if you want to scroll between all of them just swipe with three fingers left and right on the trackpad and you can move between all the desktops you want to close the desktop you reach the corner and you close resizing windows on windows it's much easier than resizing windows on mac we used to just hold the window snap it on top and we can have a full screen or snap it on the side and have half a screen it was much easier for multitasking one of the ways is you hover over this button you can enter full screen or you can put it on the left or right so for example if you have two windows you put one on the left and you put the other one on the right but this is not as intuitive as the windows way if you want the windows windows way there is an app for that the app is called better snap you can get it for three bucks yeah it's a paid app but you get all the snap to resize features that you had on windows as you can see you can snap it on the top for a full screen you can snap it on the side for half a screen in the corner for a quarter of the screen one of the things that i use all the freaking time and i think it's way superior on mac than on windows it's spotlight you just hit command space and you get the spotlight search you can literally search for anything for example how tall is joe biden you get the answer you can search for files and folders on your mac you can even find documents by using the words inside that document voila it's a quick calculator for example you can also quickly convert currencies in the current price a very handy tool at all times just command space and write whatever you want to write now one of the things that i found weird on mac that when you hold the option key and you tap on any app it gives you more options now this thing is not just for apple music it's also for the apple tv this option key thing you can use it in a lot of places and it unlocks a lot of features that are hidden so have fun finding weird things by clicking the option key for example i just discovered that i can see the folder location by holding the option key inside the finders app just use the option key everywhere let's see what it unlocks for you and let me know down in the comments and last but not least how to take a freaking screenshot there are a lot of ways let me show you some of them the quickest way which is the shortcuts command shift 3 you take a screenshot of the whole screen if you want to take a screenshot of a part of the screen command shift 4 and you get this cursor you select the part you want to screenshot and boom you just screenshot that part only and if you have multiple windows and you want to screenshot one of the windows by itself you hit command shift 4 space and you get this camera you select one of the windows that you want to screenshot let's say i want to screenshot the browser and boom now of course there are other ways also to take a screenshot you go to your launch pad go to other and here you have your screenshot you can record a video as i'm doing right now of the screen take a screenshot of a part of the screen you have way more options over here to do your screenshot much easier and much more fun to use than windows usually screenshots go over here on the desktop but you can change of course the location where they go by options and you can choose where the screenshot will save and if you want to edit the screenshot you open it up from here or you just want to send it to someone just like the iphone you write something on it you do whatever you want and that's been it for today's episode i hope you got something out of it if you did give it a sub that'll be much appreciated i'll be doing a lot more episodes about the mac very soon so if you're interested in that consider subscribing thank you for watching and don't forget that life is all about love and dance see ya